Bless y'all. My name is Jonathan K. I want to make this video real quick for y'all. Um, the Lord just revealed to me that um, the once saved, always saved doctrine, the false grace doctrine, this falling away doctrine, this great apostasy falling away doctrine is idolatry. Okay, um, I want to show you how he showed me this. The word refuse in the Hebrew means excuse, to make, to make an excuse, okay? It's used in that scripture when Jesus, um, when Jesus used the parable of the, he was asking the people and inviting them to come to, uh, to the wedding feast and they were making excuses, okay? That, that word, uh, excuse and refuse it's interchangeable it's, it has the same meaning okay so anytime people refuse the spirit of truth which is that you must repent okay because once saved always saved doesn't really represent repentance truly because if you once saved always saved you can live like a heathen and you can do what you want to do you know um, according to that doctrine which is false so I want you guys to know that it's idolatry and I'm going to show you why it's idolatry because scripture says that stubbornness is as idolatry okay you understand and so that's what God spoke out of the mouth of Samuel okay that stubbornness is as, is as idolatry okay and so when you are stubborn and you don't want to align yourself with the word of God okay you are idolizing yourself or you're idolizing the minister you know who's ever um, speaking this false doctrine that you you know you heaped up for yourself because of your itchy ears okay um so that's that's the word that's the word that I'm sharing with y'all that that this whole one save always save doctrine this whole you know false grace doctrine like you know it's grace you don't have to do nothing that's what you'll hear look out for that you don't have to do anything you don't have to do anything that's what you hear mostly, okay? You hear people say, it's nothing that you do. It's nothing that you do. And they're talking about when, hopefully, they're talking about when you first get saved, okay? But they say it so much that they, they, it spills. If you really listen with a keen ear, it will spill into just your regular Christian life, period, even if you already have salvation, Okay? Even if you already have salvation, you will still hear people say, it's nothing you do. You've been saved by grace. It's nothing you do. Okay? And so because it spills, you got people who are saved and they're not doing nothing and they don't go nowhere. They don't witness. They don't uh, live for the Lord. You know, they, they, you know, because they're hearing this grace ringing in their ear. And Paul says, should we continue in sin? Certainly not. And they're ignoring that. Because, you know, they're heaping up ministers for themselves. It's just like when um, in the book of Judges, uh, a man, um, the, I, I believe it was the Danites, they heaped up a priest for themselves, okay? And he, um, they, they gave him idols and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, um, look up that book in the book of Judges. Uh, let me see. I always feel like the needing to, let me see, because I just want to really let you guys see it, it's the same thing, it's the same thing, uh, book of Judges, let me find this real quick for y'all, it's just, I'm saying this as it comes to mind, that's why I didn't have it at first, because a lot of stuff that I share with y'all comes to mind as I actually speak, uh, okay, Micah and the Danites, Judges 18, okay, read the whole chapter, you will see that this is a priest, uh, and he was, you know, taken by the Danites, they said, be our father, okay, they told him, they said, be our father, you know what I'm saying, be our priest, and they were like, you know, um, we will give you, you know, idols and stuff like that. And he was just a corrupt priest, and he, and they would, they was, he was only doing it because they were going to uh, take care of him. Okay, you know, his fingers was itching, like, like their ears itch. 
Okay, so um, he was after that money, and so the whole I apologize, y'all. The whole the whole thing concerning that is basically uh just idolatry. It's idolatry. It's falsehood. And you see how in in the book J Judges eighteen, it lines up with idolatry. Okay, that stubbornness. It's idolatry is all in that. Okay, it's in the cracks and the crevices. All in it. It's it's, it's flooded in there. And um, it's adorned with idolatry, okay, uh, all through it, okay. So anytime you rebel against Jesus, it's witchcraft. We know that, but you know this is also idolatry, okay. So I want you guys to really get that that the once saved always saved doctrine is idolatry. You will never find the quote once saved always saved in the Bible. You will never find anything quoting anything similar to that. I will go to a passage real quick. Second Peter, if you don't mind going there with me, turn to your neighbor and say, Amen, Hallelujah. You know? Yeah, dig. Turn to your neighbor and say, Amen, Hallelujah. And turn to your other neighbor and say, you know, stop itching your ear and hear what the Word of God has to say. All right. Second Peter 2. 22 okay we're gonna start with uh I'll start with 22 second Peter oops sorry okay second Peter excuse me second Peter I'm gonna start with 20 through 22 all right so it says for if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they are again entangled in them and overcome Okay, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit and a pig having washed to her wallowing in the mire, as they so I like to say pig. Alright. So it's like you're returning back to your wickedness. Once they've always say false. If that's the case, Peter's false. And Peter is saying that you can return. Okay? Just like the true proverb says. So it's false. And if you choose to um not want to endure as Jesus said Okay, if you don't want to remain in him, in his holy, he said, be holy as your father in heaven is holy. How are you going to be holy? Okay, if you are living in sin, sin, you cannot be holy, set apart from what? What are you set apart from? The word holy means set apart. Peace. I love y'all. Represent the Lord Yeshua. Understand that the whole doctrine is idolatry. Don't worship your belly. Don't worship yourself. Okay, and don't worship these ministers because a lot of people are also worshiping these ministers it's in the Bible which one are you gonna worship the Lord's Word or you gonna man <laughs> it just came to my mind too <laughs> it just came to my mind too that same co-pastor who said don't worship he, he said you don't have to pray every day and you don't have to read every day you know but you're still alright you're still saved it just came to my mind after I just said that like let's worship the Word because the Word is Jesus well, he said also, okay, and Lord, the Lord knows, the Lord knows what I'm saying is true. That's why I want you guys to listen very closely to these, to these people because they're, they're being used by demons with this false grace message. This is the church that I got kicked out of and they put, you know, mugshot photos of me and they spread it out and everybody had, they had pictures of my old look with the long hair. They tried to defame my character. It was a mugshot photo of jail, okay. And I'm born again. I'm new. I'm cleansed. And they want to. That's how Satan does. And so, um, uh, he said, this is what he said. And I'm going to end on this note. This was his exact quote. He said, we don't worship the word of God. He said, we don't, we don't worship your word. Why? Why say that? You okay? Worship has to do with obedience. Okay? Look up what the word worship means. 